Welcome to this installment of HitMojo. Joining me is C.T. Moore, and I'm your host, Ashkan Karbis Fushan. On today's show, we're going to talk about the YouTube Conscore partnership, as well as discuss HP's strategic shift in direction. In lightning round, we're going to cover a lot of topics from YouTube, Disney, Uyala, even Ashton Kutcher, so stick around for that. And then in the email of the week, a, re a viewer asks us why we decided to launch this new show format. So let's get right to it, C.T. All right. On September 8, 2010, so not that long ago, I wrote an article in Media Post saying that YouTube could do four things to make more money for itself and content producers, and number four was hooking up with Conscore or Nielsen to basically share more data on audiences and whatnot in each YouTube channel, partner channels. Last week, they decided to make that partnership official with Comscore. We're gonna talk about that, but before, what do you tell marketers when they say, I'm thinking of marketing on YouTube, or I'm thinking of having a channel with our content on YouTube? Well, I, I think there's, there's two main ways to kind of approach YouTube as a marketing channel. Uh, the first is as a search engine. The reality is it's the second largest search engine in the world, both in the US and without. Uh, so right there, if you want to help content be found, uh, if you're very brand sensitive in terms of managing your brand or your reputation, it's definitely a channel you should be exploring and looking at. Uh, on the other side, there's the more brand style initiatives, more like advertising. Uh, you can just think about uh, the old Spice Guy, most recent success, uh, owned YouTube for, for quite a while. But then uh, last month alone, between Vivo and, and Warner Brothers channels, they got almost 60% of American views on all of YouTube, which is huge. So yeah, it's, it, it's a pretty big marketing channel, but um, as a content creator, do you, do you see it as a, as a serious channel to push out your content? I think YouTube is the greatest platform ever for content providers, and I think it's the best advertising platform ever known to mankind. I know investors get very giddy around Twitter and Facebook as platform plays, and perhaps so, but I think YouTube is far and away unique, and I'll explain main reason why. I consider WatchMojo in like the third wave of content providers in the new media space. The first ones were the pop.coms, late 90s, way ahead of the curve, no one had broadband. That was Steven Spielberg's project. The second wave of content producers on the internet were the mania TVs, the heavies. So starting to produce content, but having to build their own infrastructure and their own web properties. Their Ripe, own technology. That's it. Ripe went through $45 million of venture capital before shutting down. So we and the Revision 3s and the next new networks when they still produce content and many others, we basically had the magical YouTube platform to leverage. So I think for that reason, it's a great platform for both content owners and advertisers. Um, I do think, though, that this YouTube Comscore partnership is a game changer. Now, over time, I don't know if it's more of a small step for YouTube, giant step for content providers, or vice versa, but it changes the game because right now, we can't really convince marketers that we have this audience just by telling them. They could take our word for it, but I mean, now we have the data through Comscore, so I think this is a game changer. And well, I'm I think if anything, it's a giant step for marketers because uh, YouTube has essentially outsourced that, that transparency component that they actually need to convince marketers because it's one thing to tell advertisers who want to buy impressions on YouTube, you know, this is what the channel gets, but to actually be getting those numbers from Comscore and, or well, in this case, Comscore, uh, gives them kind of that added trust and makes them a little bit more willing to, to probably invest a few bucks. Yeah, the only sort of thing I'm worried about as a content provider is when you run an own and operated property, you know about the Comscore and Nielsen discrepancy. And that's right. almost as high as 67%, where you're, you could get 1 million uniques and basically Comscore is going to give you 300,000 uniques. And that applies to big, small, and medium sites. So that is the big concern. Like if, if we're going to get, let's say, a million unique users on our YouTube.com slash WatchMojo channel, but Comscore is going to give us 200,000, I won't be as happy. But like I said, as a content provider who's been waiting and pushing YouTube to give us you know, the, the right to sell ads and to share revenue, and they've done all that, you have to look at the forest through the trees. And the big picture here is this is a great, great step. Um, the other thing, you, you mentioned YouTube as a search engine. Let's draw the parallel here, here between YouTube, the video sort of ecosystem, and the AdSense ad words ecosystem that, that made right. Google so much money. I think this finally allows YouTube to really go very open. They've actually been always very open with the embed code and giving content providers the right to sell, but now they're gonna let us, the, the, the content providers, with our sales team go into ad agencies and say, look, evangelize not just online video, but YouTube, and basically push more inventory. So, so you'll be able to push uh, ad space on your own channel? Well, we've always had that. We've had that right for a while. We were one of the first ones to get it, but now we get the transparency at the Comscore level, which we never did. So YouTube, rumors are that they sell only 10 or 20% of their channel, uh, of their impressions, inventory, ad impressions, because there's so much volume. What this does is that, you know, if last week, if you wanted to reach the video game audience, you went on Neil 
Nielsen or Comscore, and you saw that IGN.com, for example, my old employer, had a lot of that audience. Now you could find out that Machinima, for example, has a YouTube channel with a massive audience that is into video games. So I think it's a game changer. Um, but we'll see whether or not, again, this is something that is going to be you know, lots of obstacles and hiccups, or they're going to pull it off. So I think for big branded content producers, though, where there might be a, a huge opportunity and they'll have to, you know, do the cost benefit analysis to figure out if it works. But to go back to the Vivo and the Warner's Brothers things, these guys are serving up almost 60 percent of views in July of 2011 last month. Um, if they could actually buy out their own advertising space to kind of keep that user within their brand experience constantly, I think there's a huge uh, there's a huge opportunity there. I tell you if they could, but I might be violating my non -comp my non disclosure with YouTube, Google. So we're gonna take a short break, come back, and start talking about Hewlett Packard, which made the biggest strategic shift in the company's 60 year history.